Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 6, lesson 1, Solve Systems of Equations by Graphing. After this lesson, you need to be able to write equations in slope-intercept form in order to graph them and use the graphs to solve a system of equations. Let's learn. Systems of Equations. Two or more equations with the same set of variables are called a system of equations. So for example, y equals 5x and y equals 2x plus 30 together are our systems of equations. They both have the same variables. There's a y and an x in both. When we're dealing with a system of equations, we are trying to find a coordinate point as the solution since we need to solve for both x and y. Here, the solution would be 10, 50 because that's the ordered pair that gives the solution where x and y are the same in both equations. To show this, in the equation y equals 5x, if x was 10, 5 times 10, y must be 50. That works in this one since 50 equals 50. If we check the same two values, x is 10 and y is 50, but over in the other one, 10 times 2 is 20 plus 30 equals 50, we get a true statement again, 50 equals 50. 10 for x and 50 for y was what worked in both equations. So that's the solution, 10, 50. And when we're writing it, we have to write it as the coordinate. The x value comes first, the y value comes second. In the next few lessons, we're going to look at some different methods that we can figure out what these two values are, one for each variable, in order to make the system or both equations true at the same time. Let's learn. Solve systems of equations by graphing. One method that we can get the solution of both equations at the same time is through graphing. If the things are already graphed for us, as they are in this picture, we can estimate the solution by finding where the two lines intersect. So we want to find this point of intersection. If we graph both lines at the same time, they intersect at only one point. This is important because it means the system has one solution. And these were our two lines that we just saw, y equals 2x plus 30 and y equals 5x. Our solution is where they intersect. They intersected at 10, 50, which was the solution that we were showing on the previous screen. But the key takeaway here, if they intersect, they have one solution since there's one place that they intersect. Example one, solve systems with one solution by graphing. Solve the system of equations by graphing. Check the solution. We have y equals negative 2x minus 3 and y equals 2x plus 5. If we want to solve this by graphing, we're going to have to think back to what we did in modules 4 and 5 and how we can graph lines in slope-intercept form. Then we're going to graph each on the same coordinate point. So first line y equals negative 2x minus 3. The y-intercept is at negative 3, and my slope is negative 2, or negative 2 over 1. So it would be down 2 over 1, and it would continue along those dots. To graph the other line on the same coordinate plane, so I can find where they intersect. My other one is y equals 2x plus 5. Our y-intercept is at plus 5, so up here, and then our slope, positive 2x. There's not really any room going off, so let's go back the opposite direction. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1 would be there, and there, and so on. Connect the line. Where do they appear to intersect? That would be that point right there. So we need to identify what coordinate that's at. That's at negative 2 and positive 1. So negative 2, positive 1 appears to be the solution since that is where the two lines intersect. Our next step, once we figured out where they appear to intersect, we're going to check that ordered pair just to make sure. So for this, we had negative 2 and 1, x and y. Let's replace x with negative 2 and y with 1. If we accidentally wrote it backwards, negative 2, when we go to this step and check, if we were to plug in 1 for x and negative 2 for y, we would see that we don't get true statements for both equations. But if we plug in negative 2 for x in both 
and 1 for y in both, we can see on one we get 1 equals 1, and on the other we get 1 equals 1. We have a true statement in both, which means this coordinate, negative 2, 1, is the solution to the system of equations. It's the only coordinate that works in both equations at the same time, which is why it was the only coordinate that was on both lines at the same time. Check your understanding. Solve this system of equations by graphing. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, our coordinate where the two lines intersect is 1, 4. If we were to graph 4x, our y-intercept is at 0. This is 4x plus 0. Up 4 over 1, we'd have a line there. And then x plus 3, we would have our y-intercept at 3, and it would go up 1 over 1. Connecting those, where do they intersect? 1 over 4 up. So the solution then would be 1, 4. Example 2. Solve systems with one solution by graphing. Solve the system of equations by graphing. Check the solution. This time we're given our equations x equals 3 and y equals negative 6. If I'm given this type of equation, x equals a number that is a vertical line through when x equals 3. So I'm only going to be able to plot that point when x is 3. I can graph a line no matter what x is equal to 3. For y equals negative 6. This type of line is the same as if we had no slope and our y-intercept was at negative 6, which is right here, with no slope, our line would look like that. Where do our graphs intersect? They intersect at that point right there, which is at 3 and negative 6. So that appears to be the solution. Let's check that ordered pair. Since x is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 6, there wasn't really anything that we could do to plug it in. We said this was our solution. If I plug in 3 for x, is that true? Yes. If I plug in negative 6 for y, is that true? Yes. There wasn't any simplifying or calculating to do. Our solution was just 3 and negative 6. And unfortunately, we won't see that kind of problem too often. Check your understanding. Solve this system by graphing. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, they intersect at negative 1, negative 4. If you are solving by graphing, x equals negative 1 is this line right here, y equals negative 4 is here. They intersect at that coordinate, which is negative 1, negative 4. Plugging them back in, negative 1 and negative 4 are the only things that are going to work for x and y. Let's learn. Write linear equations in slope intercept form. If a linear equation is not in slope-intercept form, you can use the properties of equality to rewrite the equation. So here we can see the steps of how to turn 4x plus 2y equals 16 into slope-intercept form. This is going to be helpful since if we're trying to solve by graphing, we're going to want to be able to use our slope-intercept form to graph a little bit more efficiently. So in order to turn this type of equation into slope-intercept form, I need to solve for y and get y by itself. First, I would take away the 4x from both sides, and I'm left with 2y equals 16 and then minus the 4x. Here, my x is canceled out. They made 0. I'm left with 16 minus 4x. Now, to get just y by itself, I need to divide both sides by 2. This will give me y all alone. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Negative 4 divided by 2 becomes negative 2 with the x. And then last to put it in slope-intercept form, I want to switch these two values so it's something x and something. I end up with negative 2x plus 8. Now I have this in slope-intercept form. I can see my y-intercept is at positive 8 while my slope is negative 2. Let's learn. Systems of equations with no solution. Some systems of equations have no solution. We saw no solutions back in module three when there were no values that worked to solve for our variable. We get the same thing here. If the graphs of the two lines are parallel, so they never intersect, then there's no solution, since our solution is where they intersect. 
we can see in the picture here, these two lines are parallel. There's no intersection point. The system has no solution. And one way you can tell if they're going to be parallel, if they have the same slope, but they have a different y-intercept, they're going to have no solution. They're going to be parallel. Since the rate of change stays the same, they're always going to stay the same amount apart. Whatever one started higher is going to stay higher. Example three, solve systems with no solution by graphing. Solve the system of equations by graphing, check the solution. We're given y equals two thirds x plus one and y minus two thirds x equals negative three. Right away, I see these both have two thirds in them as the value in front of x, so as the slope, I know they're not written quite the same yet, but since I see the two thirds in both, I'm gonna be suspicious that there's possibly no solution or an infinite number of solutions, which we'll see in the next example. In order to tell, I need to be able to write them in slope-intercept form. So this one's already in slope-intercept form. The second one is not, since we have y and x on the same side. Let's get that second one into slope-intercept form. We can add 2 thirds x to both sides. When we do that, we have y equals negative 3 plus 2 thirds x. And then, just like we saw in the learn, I need this to switch, so I end up with y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. Now it is in slope-intercept form. Let's graph these. I have y equals 2 thirds x plus 1, so y-intercept is at 1. Slope of 2 thirds, so it would go up 2 over 3. Rise 2, run 3. And I can connect that with a line. If I plot my other one, my y-intercept is at negative 3. And rise 2, run 3. I get that. Do they appear to intersect? Not within our field of view. They appear to be parallel, which they do have the same rate of change up to over three, which we saw here. There is not going to be a place where they intersect. There is no solution for this system. So no intersection, no solution. Last, let's double check. We're saying that there's no solution. To check these types of problems, let's rewrite the second equation, not in slope-intercept form, but so it looks the same as the first one. So if we were to subtract 2 thirds x back, I end up with y minus 2 thirds x equals 1. Doing this, I have these two equations, y minus 2 thirds x, y minus 2 thirds x. This part is the same for both, but the top one saying that it's equal to 1, the bottom part saying that it's equal to negative 3, can you have something that's equal to 1 and negative 3 at the same time? You cannot. So there is no solution. No time when 1 and negative 3 are the same, they're not equal, no solution. Check your understanding. Solve this system by graphing. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This has no solution. If we were to first take this top one and rewrite it into slope-intercept form, I can add 2x to both sides. This side cancels out, and now it's over on the right. I'm left with y equals, I'm going to switch these, 2x plus 4. I can tell right away they have the same slope, but a different starting point. They're going to be parallel. Let's verify. So 2x plus 0, here's my 0, and 2x would be going there. 2x plus 4, here's my 4, and I'm going to go back the opposite direction so I have room. They end up being parallel. They do not intersect. There is no solution. Let's learn. Systems of equations with infinitely many solutions. Some systems of equations have infinitely many solutions. Again, just like we saw in module three with the no solutions, we can also get infinitely many solutions. This happens if the lines are the same. The lines, one line graphed is exactly on top of the other line graphed. So what happens is they are technically intersecting at every point. In our picture here, we have two lines. We can only really see one though, but they're intersecting or touching each other at all of these points. 
everywhere on the line. I can keep finding a new point between. And if I zoom in, I can find more points and more points. They intersect at every point. It has an infinite number of solutions. If you see the same line, both times it's going to be infinite solutions. Example four, solve systems by graphing with infinitely many solutions. Solve the system of equations by graphing, check the solution. We have y equals 2x plus 1, and y minus 3 equals 2x minus 2. Again, I see the same slope in front of x here. I'm going to be suspicious that it's either no solution like we just saw, or infinitely many solutions. Let's write them both in slope-intercept form so we can graph them. The first one already is there. The second one, if I add 3 to both sides, it's gone off the left. It made 0. I have 2x, just brought down. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So writing that second equation, I get y equals 2x plus 1. When I do that, both equations ended up being the same. y equals 2x plus 1. y equals 2x plus 1. Right away, I see they're the same. I know it's infinite solutions. If we were to graph them, y equals 2x plus 1, so both of them were the same. I have my y-intercept at 1. It goes up to 2x. I can plot the line. There's the first one. If I plot the second line, it's in the same exact place as the first one. Any of these points are on both lines at the same time. This has an infinite number of solutions. Check your understanding. Solve this system of equations by graphing. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This has an infinite number of solutions. The top one is not written in slope-intercept form. If we subtract one-third x from both sides, we get y equals negative one-third x plus one. They are now both the exact same. So if we graph the first one, we have negative one-third x and then plus one. The second one is in the exact same place. This has an infinite number of solutions.